Molecular weight, formula weight, and molar mass. These all mean the same thing. Okay, it's a way of determining the uh, uh, mass of the um, compound you're talking about. Okay, basically we use different terminology for different things. The molecular weight of a substance is the sum of the atomic weights of all the atoms in a molecule of a substance. So when we refer to the word molecular weight, we're talking about one molecule. Okay, example H2O. Okay, that's a molecule. It has two hydrogens and one oxygen. So you go to your Purac table and you look up the the mass on the Purac table for hydrogen. And if you look under there, okay, if you look in the Purac table, you're going to find that hydrogen has a mass of 1.00794 AMUs. Typically, we tend to round that to the hundreds place. Um, we don't round it less than whatever's in the normal calculation. You want the calculation numbers to dictate sig figs. So you want at least more than whatever sig figs in the problem calls for. Typically, hundreds place tend to work, tends to work out. And so I got two hydrogens. So I need that at 1.01 .01 AMU each. So you multiply that, you get 2.02. .02. And one oxygen, which is 15.9994, rounding it to the hundredth place, gives me 16 AMUs. Add that up, that gives me a total molecular weight of 18.02 AMUs. That's the mass of one molecule. Okay. Now, if I was going to talk about formula weight, okay, that's a case where you're talking about ionic substances, such as sodium, sodium chloride. It's an ionic substance. You add them up the same way. You look on the periodic table. Sodium is 22.99. Chlorine is 35.45. Add that up. And okay, get the mass. And that's also in AMUs. That's the form, formula mass, formula weight of one formal unit of sodium chloride. Okay? But we don't deal on one molecule or one formula units. We tend to deal with a bulk of substance, which has to do with, with something called the mole. You may recall from Gen Chem 1 where they talked about Avogadro's number, whereas this is why we can walk to a periodic table and I can talk about one molecule or one formula unit and use the mass on the periodic table as AMUs, or I can walk to the periodic table and do it as based on one mole, and then I can change that 1.007 AMUs for hydrogen to 1.007 grams of hydrogen. So I basically can do it either way. Um, what that tells me is the mass per mole ratio. Okay, so from water, it's still 18.02, but it's 18.02 grams of water for every one mole of water. Gives me a conversion factor to go from moles to grams, okay, or vice versa. It's just like 12 inches is equal to a foot. It's a conversion factor that I can use to jump from one unit to another. A lot of what we were doing in Gen Chem 2 deals with solution chemistry. So we need to know some terminology when we're dealing with solutions. First off, when we dissolve a substance in a liquid, we call the substance the solute, that is the species that is being dissolved. In the liquid, the solvent, that is the species doing the dissolving. So if you talk about a cup of coffee, that coffee is a solid that's being dissolved in water, so that coffee is called the solute and that water is doing the dissolving, that is the solvent. Now what happens if they're both the same state, a liquid and a liquid? Okay, what happens there is the quantity that's of the lesser amount would be called the solute and the one with the greater amount will be the solvent. So if you're talking about five milliliters of ethanol and 95 milliliters of water, the ethanol will be the solute and the water will be the solvent. The general term concentration refers to the quantity of solute in a standard quantity of solution. There are many concentration terms, okay, normality, uh, PPM, weight percent. There are all many different ways of showing your concentration. The one that we're going to concentrate on is just molarity, which we we'll talk about in a second. But what concentration does is basically gives you a recipe of how it's put to, the solution is put together basically tells me how much solute I have per how much solvent or solution. There are some that are based on per solvent and some that are based on per solution. The majority of them tend to be on a per solution basis, but basically it's a recipe of how much solute per something of uh, 
solvent or solution. The unit of concentration that we'll be using most of the time in GenChem 2 will be molarity. Okay, molar concentration or molarity, we use the symbol of capital M. It is defined as the moles of solute dissolved in one liter or cubic decimeter of solution. So basically you're looking at molarity is equal to moles of solute per liter of solution. Okay, liters of solution. That means the entire solution. That is your solute plus your solvent volume, the entire amount. This is why we tend to, when we make solutions in laboratories, use volumetric flasks. Because the flask that has a long neck on it, has a little mark on it, we fill up to the mark on that neck, indicating that we have that much solution. If it's a 250 milliliter volumetric flask, that means I have 250 milliliters of solution. Okay? Solutions are not necessarily additive. Okay? If I take 5 mils of that ethanol and 5 mils of water and I add them up, I don't get 10 mils. Something like 9.5 to 9 mils okay, due to the interaction of the molecules. So basically we use glassware that we know exactly how much solution we have. That way we can do a calculation such as this and determine the molarity of that solution. The molarity of a solution in its volume or inversely proportional, meaning um, basically if I increase the amount of volume by increasing some amount of add, adding some amount of water to it, then my concentration will be decreased. Okay, it will decrease by that uh, by amount. Okay, take two on this page thirty one. Try this again, page 31. The molarity of a solution in its volume or inversely proportional, which means if I increase the total volume by adding some solute solvent to it, I will decrease the molarity of it. Therefore, adding water makes the solution less concentrated. Most of the time we'll be using a stock solution and diluting to some new concentration in the laboratory or be doing this calculation in your lecture material as we will be doing in this class. Basically we're using the formula CV equals CV where your capital C means concentration. Now you may be more familiar with this equation being MV equals MV with molarity being the concentration term but it doesn't really matter what concentration term you use as long as you're consistent on both sides of the equation. So I could do it in PPM, I could do it in weight percent, it doesn't matter. So I like using the term CV equals CV. The small c indicates concentrated, that's your bulk amount and then V for volume and C, small c, for your concentrated is equal to your diluted concentration times your diluted volume. Most of the time you know three of these and you're trying to solve for the fourth one. If you're trying to dilute a solution, then you know what the concentration is. You try, you know the concentration of diluted you're trying to make. You know the volume you're trying to make. Do the calculation. You figure the volume of that concentrated amount you need to add and then dilute to that amount. So. As water is added, increasing the final volume, so as water is added, it increases the final volume, which basically will then decrease the final molarity. One thing to realize, and very important with lots of calculations we'll do this semester, is that molarity times volume gives you moles. If I got the molarity of something and I multiply it times the volume of that substance, I will get the moles. Okay, take that, now divide that by the total volume of the solution. If I'm mixing a couple of solutions, it gives me a new molarity. This is something we do lots of times in this course as we go on and especially get to acid calculations and base calculations in the future. Okay, so an important concept, molarity time volume gives you moles. Let's look at a calculation. Okay. A solution is prepared by mixing 12.9 milliliters of 0.245 molarity HCO and 56.7 milliliters of 0.847 molarity of HCO. And then we add 630.4 milliliters of water. Assuming the liquid volumes are additive, and we can do that in this case since we're talking very dilute aqueous solutions. Okay, it makes the calculation simple. Okay, we want to calculate the molarity of HCO in the resulting solution. Okay, so what you got to look at here is what is our goal in this problem. Our goal is the molarity of HCl. So I need to know what is molarity. Okay, by definition, 
we're looking for the total moles of HCl over the total liters of solution. Okay, I'm looking for the total moles of HCl over the total liters of solution. So somewhere in this problem, I gotta figure out where the moles are coming from. Before we do that though, I wanna show you a calculation that we're gonna do many times as the semester goes. To simplify things, I tend to do things in millimoles because I don't have to divide and multiply by a thousand, okay? So let's look how that works. Okay, I got moles per liter, which is molarity, and I multiply that by milliliters, okay? Typically solutions are in milliliters as a unit. The thing to realize is that the unit is really liters. The milli is just a prefix, a power of 10 of the number of liters, okay? So it's really separated. So I can really cancel out liters. So what I'm going to tend to do is take molarity, multiply that by milliliters, and get something called millimoles, okay? Because my liters are going to cancel, and that's going to leave me in millimoles. Okay, basically my milli now, just a prefix, is now part of that mole. Okay, and gives me millimoles. Then all I gotta do is take that and divide it by the total solution, which tends to be in milliliters. Okay, milliliters and milliliters and milliliters. So I'm gonna take that and divide by my total volume. You can see now, in millimoles over milliliters. My goal is moles per liter. Well, as I said before, that milli is just a prefix. It's some. It's a power of 10 times the mole and it's a power of 10 times the liters, okay? So if it's the same, then they cancel out. Leave me in moles per liter, which is what we're looking for, molarity. So going back to our problem, I'll need to figure out my millimoles of HCl, okay? I'll follow where the HCl is coming from. We have HCl coming from our 12.9 milliliters of 0.245 molarity, okay? And I have 56.7 milliliters of 0.847 molarity of HCl, okay? I can multiply the volume time molarity each one of those and figure out my millimoles of each component. See right here, 12.9 times my 0.245 moles per liter, okay? Multiply those two together, my millis will cancel, I mean, excuse me, my liters will cancel. Leave me a millimoles. Gives me 3.161 millimoles of HCl. Do the same thing with the other component. 56.7 milliliters times my 0.847 moles per liter. Liters cancel. Okay, leave me in millimoles, which is 48.025 millimoles of HCl. Going by sig figs, okay, um, basically it's a multiplication, so least number is three sig figs, which all of them have three sig figs. That means my sig fig on the 3.161 is on the six here, the hundreds place. On the 48.025, once again, it's gonna be on the tens place on this one. Now I gotta go by addition rule. That would mean then my sig fig is gonna be in the tens place, which gets me 51.19, millimoles of HCl where my sig fig is on that one, okay, the tens place. So that's really three sig figs. So 59.19 is only three sig figs according to us because that nine is just a guard digit. Now that I have my total millimoles of HCl, I need to put that over total volume. So I need to add that over my total volume, which we know we have 12.9 milliliters, 56.7 milliliters, and 60.34 milliliters. Add all those up gives me 700 mils. So I have 51.19 divided by 700. Three sig figs is gonna be my final answer. Notice I got millimoles over milliliters. The millis cancel, leave me in moles per liter, which gets me 0.0731 molarity of HCl. Now, if you're understanding this calculation of molarity, um, then if I make a change now, Let's see if you can follow how this will change in this problem. It's the exact same problem instead of that second solution having HCl in it, it has sodium sulfate. Now, how would that change my problem? Well, the second component now has no HCl, so if I'm trying to calculate the molarity of HCl, that part has no bearing on the HCl in the sense of adding mol moles. It does contribute to the solution total, but it does not contribute to the HCl. So our millimoles of HCl, basically the second part of the equation wouldn't be there. So we would only have the 3.161 millimoles of HCl coming from the 12.9 times the 0.245 molarity of HCl. 
So then we put that in, and we put that into our equation for the molarity, and we divide it by our total volume. Well, will the total volume change? The answer is no, because I still have to account for that 56.7 milliliters. Okay, it's still adding volume to the solution, so it's still part of that, so it's still a total of 700 milliliters. Multiply that out, and I get 0 0.00452 molarity of HCl. Notice that the concentration went down, and we expect that because now we have less HCl in the solution. Homework three, this gives you inf uh, questions dealing with dilutions and things of that nature. This is setting the groundwork for problems we'll work later on in the future. This particular problem may be a part of a whole problem when we work later. You're going to have to do lots of calculations within a problem to actually come up with the final answer. Say for instance, I wanted to know the pH of the, H H H the, pH of the solution here. I would then have to take this 0 0.00452 molarity HCl and go further on with the problem.